This week, DJI did what many of us thought may never happen, and that is finally announced the new Inspire 3. Now, just to be clear, this is going to be a talking head video sharing with you my opinion on the new craft based on what DJI have announced. We're going to talk about what I think is good, what I think is bad, and we're definitely going to talk about that price point as well, because that has definitely raised a few eyebrows around the internet. I'm also going to be sharing with you some of my experience as someone who's used both versions of the Inspire, but also as someone who has beta tested the Inspire 2, the firmware, but also some of the accessories like Syndense as well. And at the end, really, I'm just going to give you my thoughts on what I think DJI have done here. So let's get on with it. Let's take a look at what this is all about, first of all. Okay, so let's start with the aircraft and look at what's changed compared to the Inspire 2. Now, I have to say, this aircraft, whilst I do have many complaints about it, has been phenomenal. And what DJI appear to have done here is taken what they did with the Inspire 2, addressed many of the issues, and improved and added in their latest technology that they've got today. If we hop over to the desktop, you'll see, looking at the new Inspire 3, it does look very similar to the Inspire 2. It's that same grey design. We've still got the FPV camera on the nose, the main camera hanging underneath, that folding transitioning arm and two TB series at the back. We do though have a lot of changes under the hood but there are some external ones as well. For instance the new Inspire 3 is slightly bigger than the original Inspire 2. When you have them folded down it's about 85mm bigger corner to corner and it weighs more than the original Inspire 2 coming in at just under 4 kilos, 3,995 grams in fact. That does mean though it should be able to be C2 rated in Europe and whilst we haven't had that confirmed yet there has been hints that it will be C2 rated as per some of the leaks. Now, if we walk down the spec, we should be able to see some of the real new improvements that DJI have had over the two. And one of the big ones is, if we scroll down, is this the FPV camera. Now, the original FPV camera on the Inspire 2 was frankly garbage. It would be enough for you to see in good daylight, but it wasn't properly stabilized. It really didn't offer a decent image in any way. It was partly limited by the small sensor, but it was also limited by the light bridge system that the drone used to be able to transmit the video signal. However, on the new Inspire 3, there's an upgraded FPV camera with a much larger sensor, 1 over 1.8, and the system, the wireless system on the Inspire 3, is now O3 Pro, using that OcuSync 3 technology, allowing 1080p FPV camera feed, but up to 4 K wireless feed on the main video system as well and that's going to increase the overall visual performance from this system dramatically. Now a real nice additional feature of this new FPV camera is DJI say it's going to work at night as well and they're showing you the much improved performance compared to the original Spire 2. They're saying the original Spire 2 was a 1 over 7.5 where this is a 1 over 1.8 inch sensor and they're showing the dramatic difference here in its capability. For instance, its field of view is 161 degrees compared to 84 on the Inspire 2, and it supports 1080p 60 compared to 480p 30 on the original camera. And they do show here this little bit of video, and I'll be honest, I'm not convinced the Inspire 2's camera looked that good. I even think they're over-egging it. They could have made these two look dramatically different, in my opinion, because I think that's even a bit of an exaggeration for how well the Inspire 2 did. If we keep moving on down, we can see that DJI have now finally added all-round object sensors. So there are cameras on each of the arms, and then you've got the sensors on the top and the bottom, and it should have much improved object sensing capability compared to what we had on the Inspire 2 and the other DJI models. I'm not personally a big fan of the object sensing system in itself, but what DJI have done, which is quite interesting on the Inspire 3, is given the user full control over the ability to turn on and off parts of it. So it isn't a case anymore of the whole object avoidance system being on. You can now say, well, I only want the front cameras or I only want the back cameras, and that should actually make it a lot more versatile than what we've seen in the past. Now down here, you can see they're showing the object sensor changes on the aircraft. There's a sensor on each arm on the corners. You've got the visual sensors underneath. And I 
Is there some on the top? Yes, there is. There's two cameras on the top as well. And I think this is great to see. It's nice to see DJI have really improved their object sensing on it. And they show here this customizable object sensing system allowing you to turn on and off specific sections. And again, I think this is going to be a great feature for people moving forward. If we keep going, they've now added two GPS antennas and the Inspire 3 also supports RTK as a result of this. Now, personally, I think RTK is a bit of a strange one. If we scroll down, they actually show the uh, the sensors in the top of the drone here. I'm not 100% sure why RTK is necessary on a Cine drone mapping 100%, but hopefully what this does mean is there's going to be a dramatic improvement in performance in overall stability on the aircraft, even without RDK. They are having the two GPS sensors on board. There's one at the top at the front and one at the top at the back, but you can use it with RTK and you can either use it with the DJI base station or you can use it with N-Trip as well if you want to. If we keep going down, they're obviously showing the new RTK system there with the base station and with the two antennas then located on the top, one at the front, one at the back. And what this should do is just give improved GPS stability anyway. And they are saying it improves mag performance. So there's probably two compasses on this. Not 100% sure on the details on that yet. We don't even know if there's two IMU sensors, but there should be from the scenes of it, multiple compasses that allow DJI to do much better with their input signal performance with regards to how they process the signals from the IMU, the GPS and the compass, and how they use that to be able to provide stability in flight. Now they are saying there's special intelligence beyond boundaries, which is typical DJI marketing bullshit for improved overall performance, high mobility precision flight system. What I really hope is the Inspire 3 behaves much better than the Inspire 2 did from a stability point of view. The Inspire 2, whilst a fantastic aircraft, had a whole host of issues with it yawing automatically in flight. Its stability wasn't great and it would just at times even struggle to fly straight. And I really hope DJI have been able to improve this in this model because these are some of the major complaints people had who were using the original Inspire 2 system. Now, battery-wise, the Inspire 3 still uses TB series batteries, but they are now TB51s. They are not backwards compatible with the TB50s. You cannot use a TB50 in this aircraft, and what that means is if you're someone with an Inspire 2, you're going to need to buy all new batteries. They do, though, include with the kit this new battery charging hub, which in many ways acts very similar to the battery hub that you used to buy for the Inspire 2 as a $1,300 accessory. It allows fast charging of two batteries and then charging of all of the others, and they are including that with this kit as standard. What it isn't, though, is sort of a carrying solution for the batteries, but it is pretty much that charging solution. Now, obviously, with this new drone is a new camera, and there's a lot to sort of unpack here with this, because what we now have is what DJI are calling the X9A, which is the full frame camera specifically designed for the Inspire 2, supports 8K, and the DJI DL lens set. Now, just to be clear, this is not the same X9 camera that you get on the Ronin 4D. It is not interchangeable with the camera on the Ronin 4D as well. This is an ear-based version designed for this aircraft. Now, this is a new DJI tailor-made sensor which supports 8K 75 frames a second in ProRes RAW and 8K 25 frames a second in Cinema DNG. As from that, you have gathered that this aircraft does support Cinema DNG and ProRes RAW. The camera has a whole host of quite impressive spec features, including dual ISO and over 14 stops of dynamic range, meaning that this thing should have some of the best low light capability that we've seen from any DJI camera drone period. Now, depending on which way you look at this, it could be a benefit or a downside, but the camera does support the DJI DL mount lens set. However, it only supports the DJI DL mount lens set. There is no camera adapter plate for this, which means you can't use it with other full frame lenses. And the camera doesn't have the same balancing mechanism like we've seen on the original X9 used on the Ronin 4D, for instance, allowing you to balance up other lenses. And you are going to be limited to using the DJI specific lenses moving forward. 
One massive downside to me with this new camera as well is that it doesn't have the integrated ND filters like we saw on that original X9. I think that is a huge shame considering that ND filters are a huge part of aerial photography and now you're going to have to go back to using that manual method and I really do think DJI have had a bit of a miss here not trying to integrate them into this camera although weight has probably been the factor. Now with regards to storing that aerial footage there is no SD card on the Inspire 3 everything goes onto the Pro SSD. This is not the same SSD that you got with the Inspire 2. This is the same one that they released with the Ronin 4D and unfortunately again you're not going to be able to use your original SSDs that you had with your Inspire 2 on this aircraft or your original license. You're going to have to buy new ones but it is that new upgraded model so if you're a Ronin 4D user you're in luck but if you're not you're going to have to upgrade. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the massive improvements in the Inspire 3 is the fact that it uses the DJI O3 Pro wireless system and it uses the new DJI RC Plus controller. Now, this is getting mixed reaction from the community. To be honest, I was a big fan of the Sendence remote, but DJI have now moved on to their new RC Plus, which has that bright integrated screen, all of the controls on board, and actually, I think this is a nice move. I think it's a much cleaner and tidier solution. 7 inch, 1200 nits. It's going to offer plenty of options for people moving forward and it just gives a much nicer experience overall considering where we've been in the past having people using tablets and cables. You're now going to be able to just use that one integrated solution. If you don't know, a nice feature of the RC Plus is that it does have built-in batteries, but it still has the capability of taking the old Crystal Sky battery or the same battery that you would put in the Sendence. So if you do have a batch of them, don't worry, you'll be able to increase your flight time by using them moving forward. Now, as I said already, that wireless system brings a whole host of improvements. DJI say it has up to 15 kilometers range or with the dual mode option, because you can use dual controllers on this, it's up to 12 kilometers. It supports the standard live feed of 1080p 60 frames a second, but you can set it to 4K 30 frames a second if you want to do live streaming events, but that is going to result in a reduced range. Another nice part on this system is that it does allow for independent dual control rigs. So you'll actually have the ability to have a pilot and a second remote. And if the pilot remote loses signals, the second remote can control and take over. And that's going to be a real nice feature for people on sets wanting to be able to pull moves around buildings where signal could be an issue. Now, one last thing I just want to mention before we move back to the studio is that this is a pro system in the sense of it is designed to be used with DJI's pro ecosystem. And whilst not everything is compatible, you can use it with master wheels and all of that other stuff that DJI have been building up over the last few years for the pro cine market. Now, the only th other thing I haven't really mentioned on the Inspire 3 is flight time. They have increased it to roughly 25 minutes, but it is still going to be much less than we've seen from other drones such as the Mavic 3. Really, DJI is hitting at the wall of physics here. This is a big aircraft. It weighs more than the old aircraft, and as a result of that, there is only so much they can do. As I've said, they do have new batteries but that isn't going to solve every problem. But they have increased the flight time over what we were getting on the Inspire 2. And you're probably going to be looking around 18 to 20 minutes with this new payload. It isn't that much more than you were getting on the Inspire 2, but it is a much bigger camera as well. And you should see a bit of benefit of that over the X7. Now, the real big talking point of the Inspire 3 release has not actually been the spec. It's been the price. If we hop over to the desktop again, you can see the three kit that they've announced comes in at $16,499. Now, Inspire 2 users initially looked at this and were shocked. However, I'm actually going to tell you it isn't that much more when you take into account what you're getting and especially inflation. This kit includes everything you need apart from there is no lens and there is no ProRes RAW license. It does though include three pairs of batteries, Cine SSD and pretty much everything you need to get up and running, that charge hub and everything else, the new RC+, the X9A camera and a case and all of the other stuff as well. 
Now, if you add in everything you need with the lens and the raw license, it comes in at $18,777. Now, whilst $18,777 sounds a dramatic amount more than the Inspire 2, it actually isn't when you compare it apples for apples. The issue is the Inspire 2 was available in multiple kits. You could buy just the aircraft, the X4, and that has resulted in there being a bit of a visual difference in the price. But if you compare it apples for apples, so you take the Inspire 2 kit, with with the X7 with the DL mount and make the sets as similar as you can. They actually are not that different and the price for the Inspire 3 is about $5,700 more than the Inspire 2 at a comparable X7 kit with the same amount of batteries, the battery charging station, etc. So whilst it's more, $5,700 is not a shocking difference considering it's been six years since the release of this aircraft and you add in inflation and you're getting that much newer technology. The real big difference here is that the barrier to entry now is much higher compared to it was with an Inspire 2. You're paying a lot more up front, but you're getting everything for it. Whereas before you could go in lower and cheaper and build yourself up to that point. I am not saying for one moment what I think DJI have done here is a good deal, but I actually don't think it's dramatic when you consider it. And the basic reality is it's chump change for anyone in the cine market as well. You are going to be probably spending close to $30,000 for a fully set up Inspire 3 kit for use. But at the end of the day, people will make that back in short order on sets, no problem at all. Now, whilst there's been an increase in price of the DJI Inspire 3 kit, accessories or additional parts have gone up quite a lot as well. For instance, batteries is the one thing we've seen a massive increase in with the new TB51s coming in at $349 each or $700 a flying pair. That is massively more than we've seen on the original Inspire 2. Also, other things have gone up. The lenses are obviously at the price the DL lenses have been before. Again, they're okay, but they're not the best or the fastest lenses in the world for that money. If we go up, other accessories are quite expensive. The remote, $1,600. But what really surprised me was the cost of the DJI K Pro 2 year pack at nearly $4 thousand dollars as well you can get additional ssds for 799 dollars for one terabyte that is a bit cheaper than they were charging before but it's still crazy money for a one terabyte ssd overall as i said it's not just the aircraft that's gone up it is the price of the accessories as well and you're going to need to take this into account when you're pricing a full bundle because you're not going to be using just three pairs of batteries you're probably going to need 10 or 12 if you're doing this professionally so, in the end, I think DJI appear to have delivered what every Inspire 2 user have asked for, but they have given us a bit of a kick in the balls as well. There is no backwards compatibility for cameras, batteries, SSD, etc. They also have not delivered many of the things that they promised on the Inspire 2. The aircraft still remains largely unstable actually at times. The flight stability is not great. The licensing plays up with ProRes and the other systems and they never delivered the ground-based solution that they promised for it. Track antenna was cancelled and we never saw the upgrades to the Syndense like they sold it on. Which means with DJI, whilst they make a great product, you have to decide if you're going to trust them again. What I've seen so far really does make me think that DJI have gone out and out on this. Six years is a long time and hopefully they're going to deliver an aircraft that really does do what people need it to do. If you're thinking whether you want to trust DJI again, it's really not a question if you want to trust DJI. It's a question is if you need that aircraft or not because less or less facts, there is no one else who builds anything remotely that can do this out the box and I can tell you now the Inspire 3 is going 
to change the industry once again, just like the Inspire 2 did, just like the Inspire 1 before it. And really it's a question of, do you want to spend $30,000 now or can you wait another year or two and get one maybe at a lower price? What I would say though is I wouldn't be rushing out to order one today. Let's wait and see what is working and what isn't working first when we get the proper reviews and then we'll be able to get to the meat on the bones of what is actually going on with this new aircraft rather than just relying on DJI's marketing material. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you found this video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this, please do check out the links to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support. And if you'd like to support us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Finally, I'm really interested in your thoughts, so please do put them in the chat section as well, and I will try and answer them as soon as I can. That's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.